Hello, my name's Stuart. I'm the curator of the Cromwell Museum in Huntingdon. And um, this is another one of our Cromwellian conversations video. Uh, this is a little bit different. Um, rather than doing this inside the museum or at home uh, on uh, our laptop with a sort of better camera, I'm doing this on my phone today as I'm going out and about uh, around the town of Huntingdon and uh, going to show you one or two of the sites that is uh, actually connected to the story of Oliver Cromwell. So I'm actually outside the museum at the moment, the museum building itself, just on the high street. Um, and uh, this building here, which dates to the 12th century, was the grammar school in um, Cromwell's time. So this is actually where he would have gone to school between 1610 and 1616. The building looks a little bit different in those days. Uh, today we've got this uh, beautiful medieval building you can see now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the Tudor period, they decided to cover it over with brick cladding. So uh, all this lovely medieval stonework that you can see on the outside of the building today would not have been visible in Oliver Cromwell's time. And uh, it was here where he studied uh, classical education between 1610 and 1616 under the schoolmaster Thomas Beard. And uh, sort of that was preparation for him to go on to Cambridge University, which he did later that year. So uh, this building, as I say, um, this was the grammar school at the time. It was also attended by one of Cromwell's admirals, uh, Edward Montague, who was the, later the first Earl of Sandwich, and uh, also by the diarist Samuel Pepys. Pepys was sort of shipped out of London at the beginning of the Civil War, almost kind of like a sort of evacuee, I suppose, and lived with uh, relatives locally and attended the local grammar school. Um, ironically, of course, he then went on in the 1650s to start first working for the Navy Board uh, whilst Cromwell was Lord Protector, so the two men did distantly know each other. So uh, I'm going to take you around some of the other sites connected with Cromwell now uh, around the town of Huntingdon, so I'll have a look at some of those. So behind me is Cromwell House, which is uh, an early 19th century building uh, which occupies the site of the Cromwell family home. Uh, it's here where Oliver Cromwell was born um, on the 25th of April 1599 and uh, indeed it was his family home for the first half of his life. Um, the building that you see today is, dates to the early 19th century. This sort of replaced the earlier building which the Cromwells would have known. So it's not this building today um, but it stood on this particular site. So this uh, particular building here now is uh, nowadays a nursing home that uh, you can see that uh, they're still proud of their association with obviously this famous individual uh, with the plaque and uh, the coat of arms that's outside the building even today. So it's on this site where Cromwell's real story really started. So I'm currently standing in St John's Churchyard. Um, this is the site of uh, one of the parish, four parish churches that um, existed in Cromwell's time where he was sort of born and living in Huntingdon. Uh, only two of those survive today. Um, St John's Church though, the churchyard still survives and uh, it's this parish church where Cromwell was uh, christened um, in April 1599 and where subsequently he worshipped with his family whilst they lived in Huntingdon and uh, indeed uh, many of his children were uh, also sort of christened on this particular site. Um, the church itself disappeared in the mid to late 17th century. Uh, local tradition has it that it was badly damaged during the Battle of Huntingdon in 1645 uh, most likely, though, it was uh, the fact that it was falling into disrepair down due to the sort of the size of the congregation's lack of funds to support it, and as a result of which it was pulled down in the late 17th century as there simply wasn't the congregation to support it anymore. But uh, this churchyard here, which is a very lovely little space, um, is the site of where uh, Cromwell's parish church was. Huntington High Street behind me has sort of uh, a lot of the property lines and it's quite a few of the buildings that still existed in the 17th century sort of have been around here in Cromwell's time. Um, the, building, the street itself might be quite quiet today, but of course through much of its history would have been much, much busier. Not only as this was the sort of main high street of a county town, but this was uh, part of the Great North Road. So what is today the A1 would have run literally right through the middle of Huntingdon, making it a bustling market town with lots of travellers passing through. So now outside the George Hotel. Um, although much of the exterior of the George today is sort of 19th century, sort of 18th century, sort of uh, a mixture of ages to the outside of the building, uh, inside is this remarkably preserved late 16th, early 17th century courtyard. Um, it's the sort of yard that uh, would have been sort of familiar to many strolling players going around the country performing uh, in the early 17th century before many theatres were existed, um, certainly outside of London. And uh, it's still used for sort of annual Shakespeare productions even today. 
Um, this particular building, sort of the George, was uh, actually owned by the Cromwell family distantly, but most particularly connected to the Civil War story of Huntingdon. It was occupied for two days by King Charles I in August 1645, uh, when he took the town of Huntingdon after a brief skirmish and set up his royal court inside this building. So All Saints Church behind me is the main parish church in Huntingdon. Um, this dates back mostly to the 14th century and uh, the font inside here is the one that was rescued from St John's Church just down the road so that's actually the one that Cromwell would have been christened in. Um, unfortunately the church is closed today so I can't show you inside but if you get the opportunity to come to Huntington it is open usually most days. Uh, All Saints Church also has the Cromwell family vault inside so this is where a number of members of Cromwell's family including his father Robert are buried and uh, there's a brass plaque commemorating them inside the church. So uh, it's a lovely church and if you get the opportunity to come and have a look inside it uh, if you're visiting Huntingdon. So the Falcon, which is the uh, historic pub I'm standing next to on the town square, this is a 17th century pub and has barely changed since Cromwell's time. It's also one of the best real ale pubs in the town as well, so that makes worth it visiting if nothing else. The Falcon is the uh, pub where Cromwell recruited his first troop of cavalry at the beginnings of his famous Ironsides Regiment in uh, the late summer of 1642. So he used this particular building as a, a recruiting station. Um, it's said by local people that he used the sort of bow window on the front of the building to address his troops, although I'm afraid that's a later addition dating to the 18th century, but uh, even so, it does seem that he used this particular building as his headquarters. So um, that's a kind of brief view around kind of Cromwell's Huntington, as it were. There is much more, so the medieval stone bridge across the river, the site of the castle where there's an artillery fortification, and many other beautiful historic buildings around the town as well. It's a proper old-fashioned market town in many respects. So if you're interested, do come and visit us here in Huntington. Do come and have a look at the museum. We are now reopened as part of the, after the kind of uh, COVID-19 outbreak. And you can find details about our opening times and uh, COVID-19 precautions on our website, cromwellmuseum.org, which you'll find the uh, title card at the end. It's got more details about that. Our uh, social media, both Twitter and Facebook posts. And of course, also, uh, if you'd like to donate to the museum. But do please do come and see us and um, we look very much forward to welcoming you to the museum and uh, also hope that you'll take an opportunity to come and have a look around Huntingdon as well. Thank you.